The following column has been published a few days ago, before the Supreme Court of the United States has decided to convert the United States into a dictatorship by granting the President of the United States immunity to all his official acts while in power. That's a great definition of an authoritarian regime, by the way. <laughs> So here goes. My name is Sam Vaknin. I'm the author of Malignant Self Love, Narcissism Revisited, and a columnist in Brussels Morning. And I wrote this column, Scotus versus the United States of America, Unraveling the Union. Public trust in the Supreme Court of the United States of America is at an all time low, and for good reason. Corrupt and partisan judges have been rendering inexplicable decisions demolishing decades of precedent and legitimizing manifestly criminal misconduct. Partisanship became rampant and unabashed. Almost all the decisions were authored and promulgated by the conservative, largely Trump-appointed majority, with the liberals in the court dissenting haplessly time and again. <clears throat> Here is a random tour of the wrecking ball tactics of the court. In Snyder versus the United States, the court ruled that gratuities, tips <laughs> paid or given to public officials by interested parties are legal. From now on, companies and individuals can openly bribe decision makers, provided the bribes are dispensed after the fact in the wake of the favor favorable auction, procurement, ruling, or legislation. Indeed, some of the High Court justices have been receiving exactly such lavish emoluments from multi-billionaires for years on end, neglecting to report them conveniently. The court reversed pres the precedent it set in Chevron versus Natural Resources Defense Council. In Relentless versus Department of Commerce and in Loper Bright Enterprises versus Raimondo, the court ruled that judges, presumably only conservative ones, are better qualified than government agencies to render decisions even on highly complex and intricate professional and scientific issues. Ironically, Rejecting such an extreme form of judicial activism has been a rallying cry for the conservative movement for decades now. But it seems that now, with a conservative majority in court, it is back in favor. This single decision against the so-called administrative state, the legalese equivalent of the conspiratorial deep state, this single decision undermines well over 17,000 regulations in all fields of life, from food safety and public health to environmental protection. A protracted period of litigious chaos is bound to ensue, not to mention growing dangers to consumers and plain folk, not the darlings or the constituency of conservatives, admittedly. In Fisher versus the United States, the court ruled counterfactually that the rioters who have attacked the Capitol on January 6 were not engaged in an obstruction to an official proceeding, the counting of the electors in Congress. It has thus undermined the case against 400 of them, possibly including Donald Trump himself. The court has also not rejected out of hand the surrealistic claim that presidents are immune to criminal prosecution, never mind what heinous, what heinous act they have committed, murder included. Incredibly, the Supreme Court is debating the issue. That was, of course, a few days before he rendered his inane decision. This is a smattering of recent destabilizing and outlandish decisions, three of dozens including the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Should the U United States devolve into civil war, as I've been predicting for decades now, the Supreme Court of the land will have a lot to answer for. <laughs>